Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here. In the year that we commemorate the fifth anniversary of Pablo Picasso's death, I would like to use this opportunity to share with you some thoughts about his legacy. And the first thing that comes to our mind would be having me talking about his extensive and grandiose work. But today, that will not be the case. Because Picasso's legacy went far beyond his art. Against all odds, it changed the way artists perceive their destiny. It shows us all that we can expect more than these preconceived and even romantic idea of the miserable artist. The one who lives in poverty, emotionally unstable, that only gets recognition after death. Unless, of course, they are lucky enough to find a pattern. So today, I'm going to share with you four lessons I have learned from Pablo Picasso's life and how to have a more prosperous life. You know when you never start anything, you just wait for inspiration or motivation to strike. Five more minutes, I don't have a pencil, I will do it tomorrow. I mean, in your head, everything's going to be per perfect and you are capable to do it. And probably that's true, but you never take action. You imagine yourself painting this wonderful landscape, but you never take the steps through the canvas or the easel. You will master drawing, but you never schedule the time to practicing it. You will win the lottery. You just never bought the ticket. You keep your goals in this dreaming level, and you even add a touch of magical thinking. You remember last year when I made this lucky brushstroke? I'm praying that happens again today during my art exam. It's funny how so many think that successful people are always in the mood to go to work or their studio. And that's not true. We are all human. What successful people know is that, is that they cannot rely on willpower. Because that, as many other things in life, comes and goes. So what they do instead, they keep showing up. You must design your space and your time to help you to perform the task that you need to achieve your goals. You take action, no matter your mood, and you keep showing up. You schedule a period, you freeze, you block a period of your timetable to practice. It can be 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yes, 15 minutes is incredible what they can do for you if with consistency and in the daily basis. And here I'm not talking only about art, I'm talking about math and physics and sports, even learning a new language. You keep showing up. You have to prepare your space to be ready to start work working. It can be a corner of your room, can be at the entire table. You just cannot stay there looking for your book, half an hour, or that pencil. You must be ready to start, and you keep showing up. And as you go, you will see that inspiration will catch you working, and that will become more frequent with time. Now that you settle time and space, you need a plan. And a plan means that you must respect instruction and follow steps. Oh my God, she's going to talk about rules. And here again, many think that rules are a limitation for their imagination or potential. However, rules can be a strong tool for creative expression. Because when you learn the rules by heart, 
and you understand their structure, you will know where and how to break them. But this time, you will be doing this in the innovative way, with logic and meaning. And note that breaking rules doesn't mean completely disregarding them. They are just a way to progress smoothly in a path that was already traveled by others. But this time, you are going to avoid losing time or making expensive mistakes. So I invite you to embrace the rules and to learn them inside out. And with that knowledge, you can push the boundaries. I even say to my art students, limit yourself. Choose a tiny color scheme. Use the same material, the same technique, and practice, practice, practice the same motifs until you master those colors, shapes, and textures. And you be, will be doing them without thinking. It's almost a meditative way where your mind and your hand will work together. And that brush stroke, that unique and genius brush stroke will emerge repeatedly, breaking all the rules that you were following. In here, I have a story for you. There are several versions of it. Did it happen? Is a myth? Not sure, but it serves the purpose. And it goes more or less like this. Picasso was in the coffee shop making one of his drawings. In the south of France and Spain, common, it's common to have these paper napkins, and he was using them to sketch. He pays, he leaves. A lady seated there recognized him. At this point of his life, he was already quite famous and old. She approaches the table and starts speaking his drawings. We don't know why and how he returns, interrupting her. Excuse me, I believe those sketches are mine. Oh, of course, <laughs> yes, they are. I know you. You are Pablo Picasso, aren't you? He nods with his head. Oh, I love your art. You paint so well. Everything you do is beautiful. Can you give me your drawings? And he responds, of course. And he sets a very high price for them. Come on. I saw you doing them. You took five minutes. How come? No, my dear lady. They do, didn't took me five minutes to do. They took me a lifetime to learn how to do them, do them so well in five minutes. So this story goes for both sides. Can you imagine entering in that same coffee shop and ask the waiters, You are so good with cappuccino! You do them so well, it's delicious! Can you give me one for free? Can you imagine paying your grocery bills, your rent, your electricity, with the nice words that you receive in exchange of that three weeks project? What do you mean you don't accept compliments as a payment? So next time you do that, and you ask uh, for a painting, a drawing, or even to copy the homework to a friend, you are that kind of friend? <laughs> Think and remember this story. In here, I will add something else for the artists. I will not say that we never should give our art. Sometimes it makes sense. It serves a purpose. I'm just saying that that should be an exception, 
and never ever our rule. So, whatever you are doing, and no matter where you are, I will ask to never take yourselves too seriously. And here I can see my art student thinking, Coutinho, is that you? You are feeling well, you are okay? <laughs> Don't, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't do your best. That lesson I will never give. I'm just saying to accept your imperfect, perfect route. To be ambitious with your progress, but to respect your rhythm. And to take care of that child that lives, we all have and lives inside of us. The one with the twinkle in their eyes. The one who sees the world with wonder and joy. Always with a smile in her face. I will tell you to have fun, to be fearless, and I will ask you, for God's sake, make mistakes. You will do some bad art, it's life, it happens. You will fall, you will fail. So what? If you learn how to fall well, you don't get hurt. It's like those kids who are learning how to walk. They fall down several times, but they also get back up very quickly. And they try again. Some kids even laughed at these small falls. And they never ever assume they are not capable to learn how to walk. So observe them well next time. And you will see that once up, in their feet and capable to balance their steps, they will start r running and probably with that smile in their face. As I prepared this uh, talk, I heard from uh, several students of mine different perspectives from Picasso's life. So I thought on adding an extra lesson as a conclusion. Should I say any, everyone or nobody? Nobody sees the reality at once and completely. We see parts that we consider and perceive as true. And the way we observe the world depends on our culture, our experience, our skills, our time. So context is everything. When we choose to share this, this perspective with others, we get a more complete view of that reality, but also more complex, because nothing is black and white and right or wrong. If we choose to remain in our bubble, we will be limiting ourselves. Nowadays, when someone is not capable to be or to do the same work with the same quality, with the same perform performance as someone else, sometimes they choose to um, destroy reputation. And Gossip is one of the most common weapons used. Sometimes half-truths, half, half fake news, lies. And that is also happening with Picasso. Was he perfect? No. But who being human is? So, against all odds, I chose to understand that his personality is complex, but I also choose to adopt and embrace the positive legacy that he left for art and humanity. How about you?
Thank you.